everyone, and welcome to the Oklahoma Venture Forum podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Golding. Today, I'm joined by Chelsea Luxon, CEO and co-founder of Paranano Wound Care. Yes. I, I told folks I've, I've tripped over Paranano too many times today. <laughs> I want to make sure I get that right. Delivering real-time detection and treatment of wound infection. Yes. This is an interesting problem that yes. you're solving. So we're going to get deep into this conversation today mm-hmm. because you will be pitching at, for OVF in April. Yes. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Tell us all what Paranano Wound Care does, the problem that you're solving, your approach to it, and and what it is that you're doing that's unique and different in, in solving that particular problem. Of course. So Paranano um, really is focusing on wound care and the gaps that we have addressed that exist in wound care. Mm -hmm. Medicare spends almost $100 billion annually on wound care. And when you dig further into why is that number so large, it's due to infection. And so if you dig further even into that, you're like, okay, how is infection costing that much money? Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about negative outcomes, right? So if a wound is just getting regularly treated and then it gets infected, we're looking at advanced wound treatments. We're looking at hospitalization, sepsis, amputation, death. All of these things quickly add up to billions and billions of dollars. And can be avoidable. And can be avoidable. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the gap, right? Is how on earth are we like, what are we missing here Mm -hmm. in infection? If you ask any wound care provider what their main uh, concern when dealing with chronic wounds or even just wounds in general mm-hmm. is, it's infection. Okay. And so thinking about, okay, this is obviously a problem. Where is specifically the gap? Like, where are we missing the mark here? And Paranano went through the NSF i program in 2020 and really focused on that question. We asked over 100 people in the industry, like, tell us about your experience in wounds care. And we realized that the gap exists because there's no way to continuously monitor a wound for infection. Okay. There's no way to know when an infection has occurred. So you're looking at a wound, you know, you all wounds have bacteria, but there's no way to know when that bacteria has started to proliferate, indicating that an early infection has happened. So even if it's been treated as well as you possibly can, there's this possibility that that that, that, that an infection could set in. Of course. And so, and we're also looking at a lot of these wound care patients um, are, in long-term care facilities or outpatient. And so they're largely responsible for their own wound care or someone is coming in once a week or twice, you know, once every two weeks. Not the same as being in a hospital. Exactly. Definitely not the same. And so you're kind of leaving up the, leaving the wounds care kind of in the hands of someone who is not trained in wounds care. Okay. Um, And so. Or they have. A 10,000 things they have to do. Of course. Every single hour, right? Yeah. They have a lot on their plates. Yes. And so. Thinking about that, it's kind of like, okay, patient compliance is an issue, right? Mm. Like getting patients to follow their protocol, but also um, even with providers, a provider comes in once a week and they can be the best provider that there is. But really, unless they're able to take samples and biopsies every time they see a patient, they just go off of clinical signs and symptoms. So they look at a wound and they say, okay, um, are you running a fever? Is there more or less exudate? Is there a smell? All of these things. Mm. But, you know, some of these clinical signs and symptoms can be a result of the multiple comorbidities that they have going on as well. Are you running a fever because your wound's infected or because you have COVID, you know, type of thing. And so it's just really fallible. And um, so we have developed a solution to this problem. We have a NanoSheet BioSense wound monitor. It's a smart Band-Aid. So essentially, it's a nanofiber membrane that goes directly on top of a wound. And it goes from yellow to green when that critical threshold has been reached, indicating that bacteria has officially reached that point saying, hey, this is infected and something needs to happen. So it tells anyone paying attention that the wound is is in the process or has reached an infection? Reached an infection, yeah. And we can detect at one of the earliest thresholds. So in the industry, talking about science, right? In the industry, there's no set uh, threshold that says that everyone agrees on that says, hey, this is infected. Hmm. But we're looking at like 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, um, you know, bacteria. And so if you are, we can detect it 10 to the fourth for some strains. And so that's the earliest point that kind of the professionals agree is uh, the earliest threshold that something can happen, an intervention of some sort. And I think most people would say maybe common sense would say the sooner you know, the sooner you can treat, the, the sooner, the better the outcome could be. Of course. So really looking at the $100 billion number, right? If you are able to catch an infection 
whenever it's mild localized rather than systemic, um, then you are saving billions of dollars. We could, I don't want to say we're going to prevent <laughs> amputation, right? Because we're just detecting, right? right. But um, with an earlier treatment plan in place, there is so many opportunities for uh, negative outcomes to be positively impacted right. and lives to be saved. So, and you actually have patents mm -hmm. on the on this technology. Yeah. So let's talk about that process. Not everyone has, has gone through that before. We've had some sure. people on the podcast that have gone through the, the patent process on, in, in medical devices. So yeah. what, what did you learn through that process? Was <laughs> it easier, harder than you expected? Sure. How hard was it? How long has it been? And what's, what are some things that people may not know about, about gaining a patent for a product like this? Sure. So I am fortunate enough that my co-founder is actually a registered patent agent. Oh, that's fantastic. And so he's affiliated with a law firm in DC. And and he's written our entire patent portfolio. Mm. And so from my end of things, we have about five patents uh, licensed from both the University of Central Oklahoma mm. and the University of Manitoba. And what I have learned is that it is imperative to do as much as you can, right? If you can. I know right. patents are expensive and they take <laughs> a really long time. Sure. Um, but if you can make a field of distortion right around your product to really try to make it as airtight as possible then you're you're kind of good to go uh patents also obviously protect the product itself there they create value with investors and then you know acquisitions later on and so from my end it's like i know they're essential we have a really great relationship with both of our universities mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, they work, like I said, with Maurice, who is <laughs> my co-founder, to allow him to write these patent portfolios. Right. And so, um, you know, it's essential. It is a long process, but there's nothing better than getting a patent <laughs> issued, right? And so, um, yeah, there's all kinds of strategies. I don't pretend to know that I'm the patent person, but um, all kinds of strategies. We have basically got a patent on the process to create the membrane that we are making, and we have a patent on the nanofiber itself, so okay. that color change piece. Um, again, trying to make it as comprehensive and airtight as possible. So, And you're, you just this product is described on your, web, on your website as, before this, there were no continuous monitoring Mm -hmm. um, for bacteria load, et cetera. So this is a, something fast and easy to use and the first of its kind. Yes. Uh, which is amazing, right? Yes. It's from Oklahoma, right? Yeah, right. Like, there you go. so exciting. So that's true. If you look in the industry, um, one of the things that we really focused on the i was the gap and also what's the market, the product market fit, sure. right? We have to know what our competition is. Mm -hmm. And in wounds care diagnostics, that playing field is pretty wide open. There has been a lot of research that has gone into it, but really all we've seen is a product called Moleculite, which is a great product. It's kind of like a handheld scan. And you buy this product, it, you take a scan of your wounds in a dark room, and it uses fluorescent imaging to tell you where infection is and what type of bacteria is present with colors and things like that. But that's not continuous monitoring. Right. Um, then you have like wound swabs, which are actually no longer an industry standard. Um, people don't like using them anymore because they're about 50% accurate. And then biopsies, uh, you know, punch biopsies and PCR testing and things, which are great, but they take up to three days to get those results back. And again, they're not continuous. And three days for an infection. Could be. Uh, could be I, that, yeah. That's a critical moment, right? Depending on what type of infection we're right. looking at. And so, and they cost a lot of money as well. Um, and so really looking at the industry, there's nothing that mm. is available to patients, providers, anywhere that allows someone to have a yes or no. It's like you are in the clear if it's yellow, but as soon as it starts to turn green, mm. You know, there's a gradient, right? As soon as it starts to turn green, then you know that there is something that needs to be taken care of. So you mentioned the swabs are only about 50% accurate. Mm -hmm. What's your accuracy rate? Uh, right now, we're at like a 94% accuracy rate. Oh, wow. Very rate. good. And that's, the, you know, we're doing uh, really great tests. We have a defense health agency contract, which has allowed us to expand the bacteria that okay. we can detect. Um, so we have tested all kinds of stuff now, which is great. All of the megas we have oh, tested okay, and we good. can detect, which is great. And some fungi of interest as well. Okay, so. very good.
Now, you mentioned also investors, Mm -hmm. and you're going to be pitching and be part of our pitch presentation in April. Mm -hmm. So where is your company now in this process from from the day it was an idea and developing this product, building the company around it, getting your partners, but now we're talking about investing. So where are you in this stage? Are you early? Are you Series A, et cetera? And what what are you looking for, and what do you think you're going to need over the next couple of years to help you move forward? Sure. That's a great question. So uh, we are going to be raising a seed round, okay. around $2.5 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we don't have that round open, but around April, May time right. frame, we will be opening it. Right. Okay. Um, so doing the, the background work now, right? Um, but that seed round is really going to be important because one of the big pieces that we have learned over the past six months specifically is that wound care and cms reimbursement so all right. of the insurance stuff is really tricky and so our original fda and commercialization pathway was quite long quite extensive we were going to go through a lengthy fda mm. process and then a lengthy cms process but we have been able to identify a pathway that allows us to get to market much sooner okay. as a class one device. Very good. So we are going to be asking for 2.5 million and that money will essentially allow us to do everything we need to do to get our product into the market with a limited release. And we have a first customer lined up. Okay. Talk to him on Friday. Fantastic. He's a strategic investor of ours for pre-seed. Um, and he's just a great guy, but he has access to 800 long-term care facilities, okay. which is great. And so we are going to do a limited release of our very first mm-hmm. simple product, the yellow to green monitor, smart Band-Aid, right? Um, and then do post-market clinical trials um, right. with he and his partners. So we can start gathering that clinical data, f- effectively moving us from just a science project of, you know, we're working on agar plates and, you know, pig skin and things like that. Right. But you really don't know how anything's going to work until you put it on a human. Um, and so post biocompatibility will be able to do that and then expand our indications for use and then start pumping out our future products as well. We have so many products uh, that can be made out of this. We've got research around different um, types of biosensors, you know, targeted drug delivery uh, platforms and things right. like that. So this really allows us to pave the way for all of the future greatness that's going to come. So you have all the things that people essentially look for in the potentially successful business. You've identified a problem you can solve mm-hmm. with a huge market. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with human beings that, yes. that, that are all susceptible to wounds, right? Yes. You have identified a distinct and different approach to solving that problem. Mm-hmm. You've wrapped a, a, a product around that. You've, you've gone through some of your, your legal hurdles. You've already have your first customer, which is part of your funding, which yes. is one of the best ways to raise funds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the absolute best ways to raise yes. funds is, is your first pre-sale of your first customer, right? Yeah. And now you're, you're going to, going to uh, bring on some more strategic partners with some cash infusion, and you already have your go-to-market, at least the entry-level uh plan in place. You have yep. every you have everything lined up. So folks, you definitely are going to want to hear the full pitch. Yes. Uh, and more and learn more. I think as much as they want to hear your pitch because and we'll talk about the other people pitching on mm-hmm. on April 12th, but I think being in the room with you Yes. Getting to have those side conversations. Yeah. Obviously, biomedical is a huge industry in Oklahoma. We have oh, a yeah. ton of great people doing great things. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I hope they all show up and, and get to get in the room with you for yes. that conversation. What else would you like any of them to know? You only get a limited amount of time for your pitch. Sure. So what is something else that you would like a, a potential partner, a potential investor, maybe maybe someone who is, is in the medical or biomedical field mm-hmm. who could help you out? What, what would you like to communicate to them before they hear that pitch? Sure. So I guess one of the key things here is that... Um, Smart wound care is the way of the future. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if when I asked in my NSF over 100 interviews that I did, right, with key opinion leaders, people in wound care who deal with wounds every day, I asked them, what would be the few, the perfect product that you could make? And every single one of them said something that would allow them to not have to think, right? Allow them to apply it and kind of forget it until mm. they needed to, you know, have some type of actionable intervention, right? And also a data dump is not helpful. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, you have yeah. like a lot of apps, but that data has to go somewhere and then get interpreted, which those apps are great. But again, it's kind of a data dump and you're burdening some of the providers there. And so really, Paranano Wounds Care is positioned at the front of the smart wounds care curve. We have a product that works. It's 
tested, it's patented, and we are ready to make, take our place at the top of this industry and be the first and easiest smart wounds care product available. And it's been a whirlwind, but we are so excited to be here and be at the cusp of something that truly is great. Right. The, the actual future of wounds care. And you said you have supplemental products that would follow, follow yes. that. Yes. And, you know, we have papers written on them and things <laughs> like that. Our main focus is obviously the class one device right. and things like that. But, um, yeah, as an entrepreneur, you always have to be thinking about <laughs> your next moves, yes. right? Yes. So, and, it, um, and it makes it more interesting to investors. Indeed, indeed. Right. We're not just a one-trick pony here. We have lots of things. If you want more information about the Paranano Wound Care, mm -hmm. it's parananolabs.com is the website. Again, Chelsea will be in the room making her pitch and talking to everyone on April 12th. Also pitching on that same day, the OVF pitch lunch on April 12th will be Pipe Dream Labs. Oh, yeah. Carrot Human Carrot. It's Care It, but it <laughs> sounds like Carrot. Human Technology. Sea Light. Otos Inc. And Myrie Health. Oh, I know two of those founders. Yes, Myri so. Health, you probably all know, <laughs> oh, Dr. Yeah. Pinky Patel. So as you can tell, some amazing pitches from amazing entrepreneurs mm. that you want to be in the room for. And if for some reason you're hearing this podcast after that pitch, again, go to parananolabs.com mm -hmm. to learn more about what Chelsea and her team is doing at Paranano Wound Care. Perfect. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much for having me.